lot of the, a lot of queer people, I would say, I would admit, they do do that. They do attention seeking. You know, I'm gay every day. She's so gay every day. To, just do it all the time. So we're immaculately clear. You're gay every day. Yeah, gay every day. I'm the mother of the gay every day. Yeah. Uh, we are evolving past the need for heterosexuality. But hi guys, we've come down to the seafront to find out whether the woke mind virus has penetrated the coast. We all know that it has and that it's basically mainstream with regards to liberal woke nonsense. Sick of it. I'm not sure why that's still up. Um, it's August next week. So June, July, August, and we've just had a little chat with a few people and apparently there's another Pride Festival next. Oh, take, take the whole year. Take the whole year, yeah? Hello. Do you live locally? No. Are you aware of the area? Yeah. Okay, great. So we didn't know that there was a Pride Festival or, or whatever you call it, Pride Parade going on, etc. So we're asking people about stuff that's really important because it is so mainstream now, right? And that's the subject of the rise of transgenderism. Do you see it wherever you're based? Do you see a lot of transgenderism? Um, yeah. I think because of the growing support of the community and the people within the community, it's grown a lot from what it was when I was a kid. Sure, I agree. Do we support transgenderism? Yeah, I'm trans. Obviously there's a Pride Festival going on. Uh, do we support Pride? Of course, yeah. Silly question. <laughs> Why do we support Pride? It's an amazing event that helps bring together people with the community. There is a community out there for you, no matter like how far it may seem. There's always people who are welcoming to whatever your identity or sexuality may be. So the topic for today is transgenderism and pride. Let's let's wrap it up with regards to what we've learned as being what we've what we've learned as being taught in schools. I'm gonna I'm not gonna presume your age, but I presume you don't have children yet, is that correct? No. Okay, cool. Are you aware of P S H E or R S H E or R S E? It's relationships relationship sex ed, health education basically. It's in national UK curriculum. Um when I was in school it was the it, sexual education was really bad. Um, oh yeah, let's go with that then. Okay, fine. So, are you a recent school leader? I've just finished college. Okay, great. So, what's your own experience then of RSC or, or anything like that? It might, it might. I think it's quite new, the RSC that I'm talking about. But what was your what was your experience? Before the new one came out, it was very poor. They it felt like the teachers themselves didn't know what they were talking about and what they were explaining. And when you had questions, they they didn't know how to answer them, and it felt incomplete it felt like i was entering a classroom with so many questions and i was leaving with more questions than i had originally started on give me an example of a question that you didn't have an answer to they were constantly talking about um biological sex between a man and a woman and i at the time was questioning a lot about myself and i wanted to ask what about sex between two women or two men and they didn't want to give me an answer my teachers were just like, I'm, I don't want to say, I can't say, it's inappropriate. And it left me thinking, why is gay or non-heterosexual sex so inappropriate towards children, but we can market all this heterosexual things towards kids? It's, it just felt disrespectful. So I, I think I, get, I, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying that heteronormativity is the established norm. It's everywhere in terms of advertising, promotion, etc. Is there grounds for that in terms of procreation and its source or, or, or in religious context or e even ancestral? Is there, is there grounds for that? There's grounds for it, yeah. Um, procreation is the basis of our species. But at the same time, as we evolve, we are evolving past the need for heterosexuality. People are... They're exploring themselves in a way that was not previously allowed. And I think because of that, a lot of the elder generations are, they're not pleased about it to be taught or showcased and they're trying to shut it down. Should the, the topics we've spoken about, pride, transgenderism, all, all this stuff, should that be in primary schools to children? Absolutely. Should children it? deserve to know about what is going on in the world and people's own experiences with it. I would have Even if they're four, five, six, seven, eight years old? I think they have to be old enough to understand what a relationship is. What age would that be? Year six. I got. What age is that? 12, 13. So sex said for you should start from 12, yeah? Yeah. I was taught when I was 12 years old. Um, I was taught what a period is, what um, puberty is. Puberty is a 
part of growing up and it's a part of discovering who you are. So 11 to 16 is secondary school, right? 11 to 16. So the stuff we're talking about, transgenderism, pride, for example, homosexuality, that should be taught 11 to 16, but you seem reluctant to say that it should be taught under 11. So 3 to 11, should should the stuff we've been, spoken, been speaking about today, should that be taught from 3 to 11? They should be made aware of it, but they shouldn't be taught in depth. Okay, so we've the, heard that a lot, that they should be made aware of it. Yeah. Awareness is the main thing, but you can't be telling a six-year-old about in-depth details of what gay people or LGBT people may be doing. Yeah. It's inappropriate, not in the way that gay people are inappropriate, mm. but in the way that you wouldn't tell a child they're about children, They're children. Yeah, they're, they're children. You can just go ahead and say it, they're children. They're, yeah. You wouldn't let a six-year-old drink alcohol, would you? No. So it's just common sense? Yeah. Is there much transgenderism around these parts of the world? And if you don't know this part of the world, is there much transgenderism where you live? Yeah, I would say yes, where yeah, we well, are, yeah, it's pretty shitty. And we're not that far from Brighton here as well, or where we are, there's quite quite a yeah. lot of trans representation in the South East, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's a good way of putting it, trans representation. Yeah. So I think that we disassociate um, surgery with the trans community, with transgenderism, which we know is being taught in schools. So with regards to transgenderism, do you support it? I support people living their lives however makes them happy. So if that means living true to yourself as a trans person, then 100%, yeah. Absolutely agree, yeah, yeah. completely. Um, I think so long as people are happy and doing what keeps them well, then yeah. Sure. Yeah. OK, what about Pride locally to where you live? Is there a lot of Pride? we got one. We, there hasn't <laughs> been much at all. Um, but randomly the there's a... Ago, they? Yeah, and there's a Rygate Pride, which I is know. next town over. Most random place to have a Pride really? And we're almost in August as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that one's not till September. Oh, yeah. September? Yeah, do, you think, quite... do you think they should have the whole year? Well, yeah, why the hell yeah. not? Just, I mean, yeah. no, I'm gay every day. She's so gay like every to, day. Just do it all the time. So we're immaculately clear you're gay every day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't clock that. Oh, okay, okay. So look, what about what about uh, what what's being taught in schools? Because this is mainstream media now, right? It's mainstream news. So whether you call it RSHE or PCSHE, there's lots of different names. RSE. Do you know about what's being taught to children in schools about sex ed? I think to an extent, but it really depends on it depends on the local authorities what's being taught quite yeah. a lot of the time. But for the for the most part, it's just chatting to making children aware of those sorts of things. I don't think that it's trying to put any ideas in their head. It's just it's, if they're already feeling it's it. allowing kids to know that there's support out there if they need it, and that's brilliant. It's better than children feeling suicidal, depressed, yeah. and horrific about themselves if they know they've got support. That's all it's about. So I, I went to school in the 90s. I'm, I'm going to guess roughly when you guys went to school. By definition, you told me your mother daughter. Did we need? You sound like strong proponents of RSHE or whatever you want to call it. Did we need it in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Is it wonderful that it's here now? Yeah, 100%. Is it too late to the party? Yeah, 100%. No, it shouldn't I, be. I mean, my schooling was most of it in the 2010s, sorry, 20, 2000s and then 20, early 2010s. And to be honest, we didn't have education about a lot of stuff that we needed to have education about. Sure. Yeah. So if it's, if, it, if it's sex ed, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're raising awareness with children and they feel safe. Yeah. 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 So we're exploring whether outside of London, the major cities, transgenderism is popular or whether they see a lot of it. You mentioned that you're not from here, but you're from locally-ish. Do you see a lot of transgenderism? Uh, yeah, I have a few transgender friends. I'm non-binary myself, so it's, it's something that, you know, it's, it's not like wow to me, but yeah, it's something common to me, like it's something that's normal to me. Yeah. So great. What does non-binary mean? Explain it to me as I was three uh, uh, someone who doesn't identify being either male or female, they don't really want either label, it's kind of just however they feel. It's just they want to be identified as just a person, not a gender. So it's not it's not anti label material. It's no, no, it's no. not anti that. You've got no issues with labels. Yeah, it's not an issue with label. Non binary itself is gonna be considered a label. It's more of a thing that we don't want to be labelled with stereotypes. Well, a lot of the time when you when you hear someone say, Oh, you dress like a girl, it's like there's so many stereotypes behind that you don't want that on your person. You just want to be identified as who you are. So what's your name? Uh, Nick. Nick. You don't want to be like, Oh yeah, that guy. You would rather be like, Oh look, it's Nick. Oh, sure. That type of thing. 
Oh, no, sure. I'm learning as I go here. So let's go into those stereotypes. Um, it didn't sound positive when you said stereotypes. It sounded like there was negative connotation. What's negative about stereotypes in, in, in the gender realm? Sorry. In the in the gender, obviously there's always going to be positive and negative things. I'm not saying as a whole stereotypes are negative. Sometimes stereotypes can actually benefit people in terms of like allowing them to be identified with who they are and like the essence of like femininity or the essence of masculinity. But when it comes to a day-to-day -day basis, people aren't going to think of the essence. They're going to think of... Um, women do this women do that like the whole like the most basic woman cook they clean they do this men they go to work that's like that basic standard where it does it can be a universal thing like everyone can cook everyone can clean everyone can go to work and make money for their family like, it doesn't need to be a standard is that not just modern day is, is that not just modernity common sense do we have to have non-binary and transgenderism with that as well i mean do we not already have that you know nowadays you both have to work can't force it otherwise that is true and it, it feels like it should be a standard that's something that shouldn't even come up in a topic anymore but it's been so like ingrained into what we learn in a day-to-day -day basis from young to old like tradition years. like it's a traditional thing that we're meant to understand like even if like say the rent went all the way back down that is something that would still come right back up like it's not something that we're like okay since we both have to work to make money it makes sense that we don't need to think about it anymore it's like if we got the opportunity where I can just work, the man, if I can just work and you can stay at home, then we'll do that. We'll go straight back to that. And in some circumstances, it's not a bad thing. Like a lot of, a lot of people do enjoy that stereotype. And it's just some people don't. And that's where the label of like, like non-binary and transgenderism, where they're trying to like bring the focus back to we can just choose what we want to do. Like we don't have to follow a stereotype if that's the basics that we need to do. And also, I'll bring up Pride because I didn't know it, but there's a Pride Festival going on here in this provincial part of the world. Should we see more Pride? Do you support Pride? Um, as a queer person, I do support Pride. It's it's not a thing where we need to see more of it. I do understand like the basis of some people are like, oh, there's too much Pride. Not that I understand it because a lot of the time it's coming from a negative place, but I understand it in a way where it's like, if you want it to be normalized, it doesn't need to be pushed because then for it to be pushed, it's then not normalized. Does that make sense? So it's like, if you have a hairstyle, you're not going to go out and be like, okay, people aren't used to this hairstyle, so I need them to pay attention to it. It's more like, I want people to be cool with it, so I'm just going to walk around and be me. There's a difference between legitimacy and attention seeking. Yeah, okay. pretty much. Well, that's, that's honest. Like, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of queer people, I would say, I would admit, they do do that. They do attention seek, and I'm not saying that's all queer people. I don't want, like... If you use it in Instagram, I don't want people to be like, yeah, that's why we don't support pride. Like, no, like pride is needed for people to recognize it as something that is normal, but it doesn't need to be pushed. It just has to like, queer people have to accept that if we put something out, it has to be accepted. And if it's not, oh well, like some people aren't going to accept it. And that's a shame. It really is. It's heartbreaking a lot of the time. But we just have to accept that it isn't a thing that's going to be accepted. Last question. Transgenderism and pride. We know that's been facilitated, uh, incorporated, sorry, into uh, RSHG. Okay. It's been facilitated. So it's not birds and bees anymore. It's pronouns. It's chest binders. It's non-binary. It's Whoa, that's windy. Oh, fuck. PTSD. Um, should that be anywhere near children? So we're having a chat over 18s, right? Should what we've just spoken about be anywhere near under 18? I feel like sex education as a whole shouldn't be taught to children in primary school anyways, whether it's, you know, heterosexual or homosexual, birds sure. and bees, whatever. If that should be something that's taught at home. And if they're not, they can learn it when they get to secondary school. No matter what the topic is, like... Obviously, it's it's actually okay. It's like, in my opinion, it's okay to teach them the very basics. Like, you have this genitalia part, and you have this genitalia biology. Part. Yeah, that's it. But that should be taught in a way where it's like, this is how you clean it. This is how you take care of yourself. It shouldn't be a thing of this is how you make a baby because they are babies. They don't care. Like, it should be more of a hygiene thing than it is a science, thing. hygiene, common sense. So in terms of that, I don't agree with any sex education being taught. Obviously, as they get older, like when I was younger, I was I didn't know what non-binary was. Like that wasn't a thing when I was younger. Neither was the lesbianism. So uh, for a long time, I was I would say confused, but I was unaware of what I was feeling. So it was like it would have been nice to give it a heads up on what that feeling could have been. It doesn't need to be pushed. It can be optional for those parents that don't feel comfortable. They can teach at home. Sure. That's it's, fine. It's, school, it's schools. It's the parents' job to deal with that and not the state's. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you see much transgenderism down here at the seaside? I haven't seen it personally, but I can imagine there's quite there is quite a bit down here. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So okay, fine. So you, you're not from this part of the world, no. but you know the area. Yes. I do. What about where, if you're if you're if you're nearish? Do you see any any transgenderism where you are? You don't not, have to say where you are. Oh no, no, not near me. No, no okay, definitely fine. not. Do you think it's more of a city thing than a provincial? You know, further away from the city, geographical. Possibly, phenomenon. maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe where it. I guess it's wherever transgender people feel comfortable. I guess. Sure. So if they feel comfortable in an area where there's lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds, then. Sure. Yeah. So that that might make more sense yeah. provincially, not so much. Yeah. What about pride parades? Do you see any pride parades around it? Yeah, here loads. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, it's. Is it this weekend? This weekend. Oh really? At the moment. So there's a pride, uh, and then Brighton Pride. I've been to once. Yeah, wow. Which is good. We're near it, so it's, an, it's August next week. So it's yeah. is Pride Month June? Is it June? Or June? If it's today, then I guess it's June. It must be no, June. No, but the Pride is the month of June, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And, we're, and, and so, oh, right, so it's nearly August now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you, think that's, do you think that's good? Do you think a month, do you think it should be 12 months of the year for Pride? I think, I mean, it's one of those things where um, it should be celebrated every single day. Anyway, because you know it's not it's not a one month thing. It's people go through this their whole lives. Like, um, why do you think it should be celebrated? Uh, just because I mean it's it's normal now. It's it's a part of normal life now. Oh, you mean you mean heteronormative relationships should be celebrated daily as well? Yeah, everything should. Yeah, everything should be celebrated. Yeah. Whether transgender, sure. um, homosexual, or heterosexual, whatever. Yeah. It, it, you know, everyone just, should just celebrate. Get on it. Mate, exactly. Just get on it. But, no, but not a specific uh, month or year dedicated to Pride. Because there isn't, like, for example, there isn't a specific month dedicated to heteronormative yeah, relationships. Yeah, of course. Un understandable, yeah. yeah. But I just think, I think they, they've they come so, like, um, homosexual people or LB. GPQ, sure. they've come so far from what it used to be that I think they deserve to celebrate um, sure. and have that month to feel comfortable enough to um, to be who they are. Really. Sure. So um, one question we ask people today is whether they've got kids or not. Mm -hmm. Can I ask if you have children? Yeah, well, I don't have children. No. Okay, cool. Do you know what kids are being taught in schools in terms of RSC or RSHE? There's lots of different... Uh, yeah, different, I, different, I different. work in a school, so... So do you, do you know what children are being taught? This is mainstream media news yeah. now. Are okay. you aware of it in terms of sex ed? Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. I've, yeah. Cool. So what are your thoughts? Just just, just generally now, because I didn't know, obviously, you, you work in a school. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? It, it is one of those things where you... I don't have a specific opinion on it. I'm just, from the point of view... This is what I'm asked to teach, so I teach it. You know, so I'm I'm of that opinion. I don't have a strong opinion on whether it shouldn't or shouldn't be, basically. What just what, uh, what's it? Um, just following orders that you know, yeah, you, kind you, of thing. You're, you're the curriculum. Sitting, the curriculum yeah. is the curriculum. Yeah, right? it is what it is. So your hands are tied. Yeah. Have I got your consent for the interview? Yeah. Fantastic. All right, guys. Have I got your consent for the interview? Yeah. Yeah. All right, first of all, do I have your consent for the interview? Yes. Fantastic. Do I have your consent for the interview? Yes. 